Winter is coming, so how can we protect our dogs? We have Dr. Ross here today to help us keep our dogs safe from the impending cold front. You're on your own with those white walkers though. Welcome back to Alpha Paw, your destination for everything dog. I'm Bernie Zilio, and I'm on a mission to answer every doggone question you have ever had about your fur babies. And today we're talking about how we can protect our dogs in the cold weather. And fortunately, we have an expert with us today, Dr. Ross Bernstein. Dr. Ross is a seasoned veterinary professional and pet care expert. He earned his doctorate degree in veterinary medicine at UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine, and his work has been featured in several industry-leading publications, including the Journal of Veterinary Surgery. He is our go-to vet for everything we want and need to know about our fur babies. So welcome back to Alpha Pod, Dr. Ross. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Now, as snow begins to fall all over the country, not in LA per se, even though it's like 68 degrees and I am freezing my butt off, but as snow begins to fall around the country, I want to talk a little bit about how we can protect our dogs in both the cold weather and when it's actually snowing. So the first question I have for you is one that I think most people have. People believe that dog's fur is enough to keep them warm in the cold weather. Is that actually true? Partly. I mean, if, if your dog is an Arctic breed, like a husky or one that has a very, very heavy uh, hair coat, then... Yeah, maybe it is enough, but definitely not for all dogs. And it also depends on what that dog is used to doing. So if they're always inside a heated house and then they go outside in the, in the snow and it's windy or even wet, then yeah, it's they they could potentially be at risk for, for getting very, very cold. What about their paws? Because I know in hot weather, we have to take precaution to make sure they don't burn themselves or, you know damage their paws. So is, does the same hold true for cold weather? Yeah. Uh, probably the, one of the most important things is when snow is all over the, or on the ground and people want to make it safe for walking or for driving, salt is thrown out and that can be very caustic to the paws causing some erosions and maybe some ulceration. So you can definitely wa wash their feet off after they come back from walking outside, or you could even give them booties. Something else that you should watch out for is getting frostbite on their toes. So if they've been out for a long time, then uh, you want to make sure when you come back inside that you take the, sometimes snow can pack in between the pads or, or in between their toes, and that can be very cold for them. Another thing, and this actually used to happen to my dog, he, when, when we would play fetch outside, uh, in the cold, he he would just run, 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 run. He didn't act like he was cold or sore or anything. But sometimes snow can can freeze and turn to ice, and sometimes ice can be very sharp. And so just be careful when your dog is running around it on the snow or ice that if if they get a cut on their paw, that that you check them. See, I'm from Miami and currently live in Southern <laughs> California, so I don't know any of this. But I do travel with my dog, and it's it's good to know these things just in case there is snow or it is cold, you know? Um, so yeah. is there some sort of like barometer that we can use? Like how do we know if it's too cold for our dogs to go out on like long walks or take them to the park or anything of that sort? I don't know if there's a specific temperature uh, or anything hard and fast rule that you can use whether or not it, it's too cold. I know a couple of years ago, there was the polar vortex that was definitely too yes. cold to take them outside. But um, I would say if, if you have to put a big heavy coat on yourself, then you should make sure that you're, you're not outside for too long uh, with your dog or even put a sweater on them. And always look, look at their, their behavior, whether or not they're shivering, uh, and some signs of what we can call hypothermia. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because I did want to ask what um, we sh should be looking out for. If we do have to take our dogs out and it is snowing or it is super cold, what are some of the symptoms of hypothermia in dogs? Yeah, so it, if it, if they get super cold and hypothermia basically means a where, where their core body temperature drops below the normal range. And so kind of like you or I, some of the symptoms or clinical signs would be very similar, like shivering. They can become lethargic. Their mucous membranes sometimes become pale or, or gray. 
Sometimes they can start getting frostbite on their extremities, like their paws or ear tips. So those are some important things to, to keep an eye on. Okay. And if we can't take our dogs outside and we can't take them on their normal walks, are, do we just kind of play with them indoors? I mean, what is the solution <laughs> to that? Oh, that's, it's, it's a really, really good point. Really, really tough. So like, for example, in, in that polar vortex where there were government advisories to not go outside at all, unless you absolutely have to. So in those situations, yeah, put a, if you have a little coat that you could put on your dog, um, you could do that. But make sure you're only outside for as little as time uh, as possible. But sometimes it's a little unrealistic to expect your dog who is potty trained to go outside to all of a sudden not have to go outside. I just thought about something. So dogs, you know, most dogs are trained to go to the bathroom in the grass. But if there's a ton of snow on the ground, this might be a stupid question, but do they still know to go on the snow covered grass? Like, is that like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some, sometimes it, uh, it depends where, so it's not always completely covered, but they, they can still smell through the snow okay. and they'll still, they usually still go. And if there's been a lot of dogs walking that pathway, then usually they'll still pee where other dogs have peed or gone on potty before. So Usually it's not that much of a problem. And when they go to their favorite tree or favorite bush, usually the process starts. Gotcha. Okay, good to know. Now, I know it's not just the cold weather, but the wind also has a big role in protecting our dogs. You know, it can affect them. Can you kind of break down the different ways that wind factor plays in? Yeah, pretty much. So when it's very cold outside, the wind can cause a big wind chill factor too. And especially if they're wet and we talked about it in a way to cool your dog down through evaporative cooling, where if it's too hot, you put water on them and then the wind can blow on them and that cools them. So the same goes for when it's too cold outside and it's very windy, then the wind can definitely make their temperature drop even more. So lots to look out for as uh, the country starts cooling down, even though it's 65 degrees here. Um, so given that I'm clearly not super knowledgeable in this subject area, is there anything else that um, we should be concerned about, aware of when the temperature starts dropping and we're trying to take our dogs outside? When So a lot of dogs can, when they're active and running around and doing exercise, usually they can stay out for a little longer. But often it's in that cool down period or when they stop exercising that their body temperature can quickly drop because just, just like us, we, we can play sports, we can do exercise, but then, or I mean, outside in the cold weather, but then when we stop exercising, we stopped producing that internal body heat. And then we need to make sure we don't cool down too quickly because if we're outside and it's snowing or it's, it's a really cold, cold weather, then we should get them inside or at least give them a sweater or a towel or something that doesn't let the temperature drop too quickly. Wow. Well, this has been incredibly informative. I think a dog in a sweater and booties is like the cutest thing in the <laughs> world, but it's good to know that it's also extremely useful um, as you know we get closer to colder weather. So if you have more questions for Dr. Ross about how to protect your dog in the cold weather, drop them down in the comment section below. Again, I'm Bernie Zilio, and this is Alpha Pop. Be sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single dog on episode. We'll see you next time.